What is up, Silver Screen Bingles lovers? It is I, your master catarist, Lucas, and I'm here bringing you your very first training now that you have your new kitten. Now, before I start going into all this, I want to make this very clear. If you haven't done this already, or if this is new information, you're in the opposite thing, it's never too late. Um, this has been a very, very busy season. <laughs> I did not expect at all for everything to happen so quickly. Um, normally, I put the kittens up for sale around like six weeks. They're all claimed by about 10 weeks, and they go home like in waves from about 10 weeks to 14 weeks, depending on the timing and the delivery. And no, <laughs> it was two weeks that I put them up for sale, and they were all gone. <laughs> so that was a lot. Um, but I want to talk about today what the first three months of having your new kitten are going to be like. Maybe you've had a kitten before, maybe you haven't. Um, Bingles are very specific in the fact that they have certain energetic needs that just kind of need to be met. And as long as you're doing those things, you're gonna have a great time with your Bingle. Um, if you're not meeting the energetic needs of your cat, good luck. Okay, so first thing I wanna talk about is diet. Um, I've already released a video about what it is that I feed the cats. Um, now, I've been using 25% kibble because some people wanna to transition to kibble and it's important that I was doing that for you to make it as easy as possible. Um, every cat will transition differently. Some cats can transition in under a week and some cats might take several weeks. It just really depends on your cat and what it is you're trying to, trying to, to transition them to. Um, so, the diet thing, it's going to be up to you. Um, you can talk to your vet and see what it is that they say. There's a slew of information out there. I literally, like, no freaking joke. Like, I was taking my cats to a vet, who will remain nameless, who knew what my diet was. Like, we had talked about it. They had absolutely no problems. They just said, hey, well, make sure, you know, you're using sanitary sanitary bowls and you're cleaning the counters afterwards and just make sure you're cleaning up and not letting bacteria grow around you. Not a big deal, right? They, they said it was fine. And then I had a client who took them to the exact same vet and specifically told them that raw feeding is bad for them and it's not safe and they shouldn't do it. <laughs> same vet, different opinion, two different people. So you can go and find out whatever you want through your vet, through Google. That's totally up to you. But in the end, you're going to need to trust your heart and your mind for what you think is best. Um, diet in general, I'm pretty consistent with the feeding schedule. Um, we have lunch around here from 11 to 12, and then we have dinner between five and seven. And so the cats eat when we eat. And generally, now that we're starting over, we're gonna have all kittens and ro roaming the entire house for a while, um, they're gonna be eating literally in the room with us. And so back when I had Bingles originally, I would be preparing food for myself and they knew that while dinner was being prepared they were about to eat so they'd be in the kitchen with me getting all lovey-dovey and having fun um, and during that time anytime I was cooking food that things that they could eat I would be giving them scraps from that so if we're making you know chicken breasts that night then I would cut you know a sliver off the end of the chicken breast I cut it into little pieces and as I'm walking around the room this is a great time to train them how to sit um, as I'm walking around the room I would say it was Apollo hey Apollo come here can you show Papa how to sit and you know it took about a week or two to get that down but can you show Papa how to sit and he'd sit good job and you're already encouraging good behavior through treats which is really in the end just their meal anyway um, now because they've been on a raw diet Bengals can easily consume any bird, which most common for us is chicken and turkey. They can consume any bird, whether raw, partly cooked, or cooked. Doesn't matter. Um, the seasoning thing, uh, you want to stay away from seasoning as much as possible. Um, light garlic and light salt, maybe pepper, anything spicy. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so it's a great time to get that that pattern building in is for the diet. Um as I've been doing my absolute best to tell every single one of you, it is always best to do this every single day. Play, eat, cuddle. In that specific order. Play, eat, cuddle. Make sure that you're doing that because one, it activates their, their digestive system to move any food that's been left inside the upper part of the GI down to the lower GI. And it's just good for them to have that physical movement before they eat. It's the same thing for humans. So if you're not doing that, you should be doing that. Just do 10 squats. Like, it's an easy way to start. 
Um, now, sleeping schedule. Someone reached out to me tonight and asked this question and it had never even occurred to me to ever like tell someone this because I'd never really thought about it. Um, they reached out to me and said, he's crying a lot. He sounds really sad. I don't plan on him sleeping with us regularly. I don't know what to do. And my response to that, it took me a minute to download the file, um, was, and download the file is like, <laughs> I need to look it up, I just intuitively, um, download, <laughs> was if he's not gonna be sleeping with you regularly, you don't wanna make a habit on the very first night of putting him in your bedroom just because he's a kitten and because he's little. If that's not how it's gonna be at your house and he's gonna be sleeping with his brother, which is his, they're related. Let's see if, if Morpheus and Neo were brothers. It's his uncle. He's with his uncle. Um, if they're not, if they're going to be sleeping together and they're not ready yet because Neo's not acclimated to him, I would just leave him in there alone. Put him in his room alone. If that's where it's going to be and you don't want to create that, I would call it lie of going, you can sleep with us. <laughs> don't. Like, they need to be in however they're going to be with you. If they're going to be sleeping with you every single night, go ahead and bring them in now. If they're not going to be sleeping with you every night, don't do that. Like, don't start that pattern. Don't start the pattern. Like, trust me. Um, the other thing was playtime. Bingles, <laughs> this happened today. They discovered that they can jump really high. And I was like, yeah, he's only three months old. <laughs> uh, wait till he's like, you know, literally, uh, here's a good story. So this one time I had an apartment. Okay, and here's the, here's the first floor, and here's the second floor, and there were stairs that went up to the second floor, and on the second floor, it's like a rectangle, there was a section that was about, I'd say, six feet wide by eight feet long, and this is a loft apartment. So the first floor was about nine or 10 feet high. Then the second floor was almost 20 feet high, but the, the railing from the point that went down to the downstairs you could see in was about another four or five feet. My cat Apollo would do this all the time, scared the hell out of me. He would run up the stairs, jump onto the railing, and then he would bound to a wall, to a wall, to the side of a hutch, to a chair, to the floor. He was literally jumping almost like 14, 16 feet down. And he'd run back up and he'd do it again. Run back up and do it again. This one time, we had another cat named Genesis, who <laughs> we were in the middle of doing some stuff to the cat rooms. We had just gotten a new female and grandma had moved into the house and we were supposed to find a better, a bigger house before like a, a different apartment space before we did and didn't get out in time. So our house didn't get finished. And so we had to put Genesis outside on this gigantic patio. This is like the middle of spring. It's good weather. So don't sit here and judge me. And we were on the second floor. It was again, probably 15 to 20 feet down. He jumped off of that, that second floor balcony multiple times. Like we had put him out there so we could move things around and get this cleaned up and all this stuff. He jumped down from the second story balcony. So, and I had another time in an apartment where I had my, my balcony door open this is that apartment I told you about where I had the, the, the loft and I had opened the door to just let some wind in and I'm just moving around the house and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I can hear a cat crying and I'm like, what's going on? Like, why is there a cat crying outside? So I walk outside. None of my cats are there. I walk back inside, look around the apartment, can't find the kittens. I hear the cat crying again. I walk outside. There was a ledge about this big. Okay. That was about this far this far away from the balcony, <laughs> was it Apollo? It was Apollo. He had climbed across that like 12 to 14 inch gap onto this little bitty ledge and had walked all the way across to the other apartment balcony and then had jumped over like two or three feet to get into their balcony area. So before you go thinking that your bingle is not gonna get into trouble and he's not gonna find ways to get into high places, you're wrong. <laughs> Bengals are amazing animals. Um, playtime. Wow, we got a total sidetrack there, didn't we? Um, playtime. It needs to be active. It needs to be up and on to stuff. Like laser pointers are one of my favorite things because they'll follow it anywhere, and it doesn't take a lot of energy for the the person to entertain them with a laser pointer. And so I would take the laser pointer and be going like up into the cat tree and back down and up and over furniture. I mean, I would be running that cat everywhere and I do it until they stop. 
you play with them until they stop playing with you. Then at that point, you walk away, you go make dinner, you feed them, and then I guarantee you afterwards, after that, all that playtime and all that feed time, they're gonna cuddle you like crazy. Um, the last thing is, I already mentioned part of the sit. Um, sitting is one of the easiest things to, to teach a cat. Um, wh what you do is you hold the food. Now, I, my hand signs are sit. Like I do this to say sit. And then I taught two different Bengals that once I flip my hand up, they would stand up on their hind legs. So what you do is you hold the food and you say sit. Okay, and I, I do fingers together. I go sit. And generally, just having something above their head, they're gonna lean back. Um, and usually their tails in the beginning and their butts will like levitate off the floor. You hold your hand in place and just put your hand on, on their tail like on the back of their spine where it meets their tail, don't push down, just put it there and say it again, sit, sit. Like make it really clear, sit. And then when their butt touches the floor, right to the mouth. Um, don't let them bite it out of your mouth. If you go to reach it towards them and they move their head forward, take it away. Sit, touch, give them the food directly. Um, depending on your cat and how um, assertive they are, they might take it out gently, they might take it out crazily. Everyone's different, but I would like, do not, if you're gonna use more than one hand sign, don't do sit and then try to flip your hand over and give it to them like this. No, 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 sit and give it to their mouth. And again, do not let their heads move. Keep their heads down. That's part, not down, but head in place. That's part of like the uh, the dominant submissive role. They need to stay in place and get what it is that they are supposed to get from you. They're not getting it, you're giving it to them. Um, and then stay. It's probably a little soon to teach a cat to stay, um, but it is possible. <laughs> and then fetch, the whole fetch thing. So during dinner time again, when you're doing dinner time, Take a tr like hold the food, let them smell it, like get it close to their nose so they know that you're holding food. Take a take their toy, their favorite toy for our cats. It's usually the shiny little like it looks like aluminum foil toys. Um, it's not aluminum foil because that would be that would be dangerous, but it's like a shiny metal metallic toy. Um, throw the toy and let them go get it, and I guarantee you, at least in the beginning, two to three out of five times they're gonna grab that toy and come back to you because they know you have food and they know you're about to feed them. So like you have to kind of be smart with how you're setting it up because you're psychologically programming them to realize patterns. And the sooner that you get into your own pattern, which is probably most of our issues, right? Is getting to our own like pattern of consistency. As soon as you're inside that pattern of consistency, they will just start going into the vibe with you. It's not gonna take a lot of effort as long as you're on a consistent pattern. I mean, those of you that have kids, this should be the easiest for you <coughs> because your kids get up at the same time every single day for school. They're home at the same time most days for school minus activities. Y'all probably have dinner at the same time. The kids are to bed at the same time. Like those schedules, get them in line and get them quick. Um, as a fair warning, anytime that you're experiencing scratching with claws, this is the time that you need to be on that cat and watching them at every single moment. I tell people all the time, do not just let your kitten roam the house for the first three months. Like I, mm -mm, no. And the reason being is because you don't know what they're getting themselves into and where they're going. And unless your cat, your house, your cat is completely house proof. Unless your, unless your house is completely cat proof, which I guarantee you, the longer you have a bingle, you'll realize what a cat proof house is. Um, as your cows become more and more cat proof, anytime you see them clawing something, don't yell, don't scare them off. Go grab them, pick them up, take them to what they're allowed to scratch. You have a scratching post, right? Like you have a cat tree with a scratching post, like you need one. Take them over to that, scr to that, that scratching post and just see if they'll do it on their own. Ron is really good about doing that. If I just move him, he'll go, he'll go to the cat and start scratching right away. But some of them, like Pluto, is not. So I have to take her over there and I have to take her paws and you can press on the tips of their paws and make the claws come out and you rub their paws into the tree for them. And good job, good job. You're so strong, you're so smart, you're so good. Right, retrain. 
And that's all I got. 15 minutes. Um, I will be releasing live videos and somewhere around probably month six, um, I'm probably gonna reach out to all of you and ask, how's the bingo life been going? Do you have any questions, anything going on? And I'll make a new video from six months to a year about updating people. Of course, you are more than welcome along the way to reach out to me at any time, any time. Um, last piece of advice. If you have a large house, like if you have two floors, <clears throat> I would highly encourage you to have at least one litter box per floor in a very easy, accessible, central location. Um, everyone has preferences where they, 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 like, they like their litter boxes. Um, bathrooms are very popular. Laundry rooms, surprisingly, are very popular. I don't know if I could do that. Like that's like literally a, a clean space. So to me, having a litter box and a laundry room, unless you have a really big laundry room, our laundry room's like, you know, literally 12 by eight. So I, there's no room in there. Um, but having a litter box in a centralized area that is a smooth surface, that's easy to clean, non-porous, good stuff. Um, in the meantime, if you don't need anything else, just reach out to me. I'm so happy for each and every one of you. Master Catter is checking out.